Purchase. I hosted a very fun event this past weekend on Saturday morning. Uh, Milk and Cookies was the name of the event, and it was uh, my idea as part of the New York Wine and Food Festival. And we actually um, took a lot of uh, tape. We were uh, interviewing all my friends who were baking and, and uh, displaying their cookies, and people brought their kids. And uh, take a look. You'll see how nice it was. The third annual New York City Wine and Food Festival was held over the weekend with 134 events throughout Manhattan. This year I hosted an affair called Milk and Cookies in the beautiful New York Times building. I invited 21 of my favorite pastry chefs to share their favorite cookie creations. Welcome to Milk and Cookies, and we're very excited to be here. We tried to make it fun for the whole family by bringing the children with the parents here to this event. I'd also like to thank all the chefs who are here today who baked a lot of cookies for your enjoyment. 513 attendees enjoyed trying scores of different types of cookies. Of course, I shared some of my favorites. We have lemon glaze candy ginger cookies, which are these. And we have dark chocolate espresso cookies, one of my favorites. And then we have also a walnut cranberry orange biscotti. Very delicious. And behind is what we call the runway from our new cookie app. It is a very beautiful interactive app for the iPad that will uh, enable anybody to bake the best cookies from uh, our collection of cookie recipes. Let's take a walk around because it's very exciting what's going on here. So there's a little bakery in Brooklyn called Baked. There's always a twist. There's caramel with salt. There's chocolate with salt. What are these called? These are our salt and pepper cookies. It has a little bit of white pepper and some Ooh. Florida cell on top. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is Karen Damasco, and you're part of a restaurant. Yes. You are the pastry chef. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So uh, what did you bring uh, today? These are oatmeal with a white chocolate cream cheese filling, and uh, these are Nutella's. So it's like ground hazelnuts and milk chocolate. What is this one? These are my version of fig bars. Oh. This recipe was inspired by you. I started with one of your recipes for fig bars. Fig Newtons. <laughs> oh. Yeah, fig Newtons are my all-time favorite. Here I am with Terry Hirschkowitz, and this looks like something I will love. What is this? Raspberry Ruggler. Oh. Raspberry rugula with what kind of nuts? I love well-made rugula. And I would say that these are amongst the best I've ever tasted. Now, I am with the incomparable Jacques Torres, uh, who has really brought to New York an amazing baking sensibility and an amazing creative sensibility to chocolate and to all the other products that you make. And he uses so much chocolate in his cookies. And, and butter. And, well, yeah, and butter. <laughs> That's and, a French recipe always. Oh, this is cute. Halloween haunted house? Oh, yes. We have a lot of those oh, now. A lot of pumpkins. Does the most creative work with chocolate and wonderful molds, too. Wonderful shapes. There were cookies of all shapes, sizes, and flavors, beautifully designed and deliciously made. They were baked by an impressive roster, including Petrosian, John Baricelli, Amy Sherber of Amy's Bread, and Gina De Palma from Babo. This mom created gluten-free cookies for her daughter, who has celiac disease. Your mom started this because of you? Yeah. How great. Now, what are the flavors of cookies that you make? Yeah, double chocolate and ginger snap. We bake with garbanzo bean flour and coconut flour and alternative flour. It is hard to make gluten-free foods taste delicious, and you obviously have a secret for doing it. Thank you. That's really good. Thanks. We're having fun with it. Mm. Everyone enjoyed tasting cookies, <laughs> decorating cookies, and then I oh. fill it in with a lot of squiggles. So. And crafting unique bags to pack them in. Oh, that came out oh, really yes. good. What fun.